It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, my friends, I got a great show for you today, really a great show. We're going to talk about um, a person uh, that came in uh, into the country and did amazing things. But the interesting thing is that this particular story that you're going to hear today from my guest is something that we all can achieve if we do it the right way. Well, my guest is Bill Rosado, and Bill uh, comes from Mexico when he was 14 years old, but it's an interesting story of what he did and, and how he accomplished things. And we could always, we could relate to some of our um, grandparents and some of our uh, relatives that came in from uh, different countries and made it worthwhile for them and their families. Bill, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. You have a very interesting sh story to tell uh, based on our little preliminary interview we had this morning. So Bill, tell me who you are. Uh, my, as, as you mentioned, my name is Bill Rosado. I was born in Merida, Yucatan, Mexico. And I came to the United States at the age of 14 in 1974 uh, to a little town called Milford, Pennsylvania. I was brought here by my older brother who raised me. My, my father passed away when I was two, but my older brother married his pen pal and moved to the United States and uh, I was the youngest one of five and I came up here when I was 14 and uh, I never left because I love it here. Coming here at 14, okay, and, and of course, you know, we, we, we have, um, you know, legal immigrants, okay, and people who want to come in and we have a vast opportunity for everybody. Uh, my grandfather came from Italy, I mean, so, you know, and they came and they developed things. So what was, what was the, um, what was one of the major reasons why you wanted to come to America? Well, truthfully, when I first came at the age of 14, at that age, rebellious, you know, I said, what am I doing here? I can't speak the language, you know, I don't like, you know, there was very little that I enjoyed. But I did see, however, that the United States is a country that was, is so organized that there's tremendous respect for each other. And that really captured my attention. Um, and of course, the, the ever, the, what I always said that this country offers uh, everyone, uh, and I'm blessed to have taken advantage of, which is an opportunity. You know, that's, that's, that's one of the greatest reasons why I stayed here. So you came with your brother, you, you used to live with your brother? Yeah, I lived with my, with my brother for a short period of time, and then from that, you know, I grew up from there, went to school and all that good stuff. Yeah. Now you went, to, you, you were in Milford, you said. I went to high school in Milford, Pennsylvania, yeah. and I was an accomplished soccer player. Oh, is that right? So I, I ended up going to, to college in, um, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, that was a little junior college at the time, Keystone Junior College. But quite frankly, I did not like school, so mm -hmm. I uh, ended up working, got married at a very young age, and uh, started selling cars, and from there on. All right, now you're speeding the program up here a little <laughs> bit, okay? I, I, I don't give all the good stuff out yet. <laughs> When, when you were 14 years old, okay, and then you, what was your, you know, uh, work ethic at that particular time, you know, at 14, you know? Well, it, 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 I, was, um, I was blessed by being raised by, by, by my, my brother and, and actually the rest of my brothers as well and, and of course my mother. And we embraced, um, uh, you, you get nothing, nothing free is often worth having. So I worked wait, as I was a Say that again. Young. Nothing free is often worth having. Um, well, I wish we could phrase that, okay, <laughs> I wish, which, is, which is really a great statement, but continue on. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's, and, um, so I, I, I was taught to work for everything since day one, since I was a very young kid. So the work ethic was, it was built into me by my family. So what was your first job? My first job when I came to the United States, yes. uh, my brother was a partner in a nursing home. So I worked at a nursing home, um, you know, taking care as a nurse's aide at the age of uh, basically 15 when I was going to high school. And I also cooked as well. Okay. So you, you, you started off working. Um, you, you wanted nothing for nothing <clears throat> because you were raised in a family like that, okay, like I was. And a lot of people throughout this country were, were, were raised that way, particularly in the areas that we live, okay? Yes. What did you find that was um, really, uh, you said about the country being organized, okay? What was the first thing that um, you um, were really thrilled with with this with the country. I mean, there's, I'm sure there was a lot of things, but what what was like one of the highlights? I, I'll tell you exactly the <laughs> highlight that, that I remember forever. Um, certainly, Mexico is a country which I, I adore, but 
when I came to, to the United States, something as simple as um, we went to a museum, my brother and I, and I noticed there was people standing outside. And I said, you know, they're going to open soon. We should get in line. And he said, no, 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 everybody's respectful here. And I was amazed when the doors opened, everybody did single file and walked in a tremendous civilized way. Uh, I said to myself, man, this is how people should be, respect each other. You know, there was no, there was no pushing and shoving, everybody lined up and went inside. Um, at, at that time, I think Mexico did not really have that. It was kind of whoever got there and pushed their way in, got in first. And mm -hmm. I mean, that certainly has changed since then. But in the United States, I felt that this is a very respectful country to each other. And it, that, that, that impacted me tremendously. So with that foundation, and I, and I always, um, when we're talking to people, I always say, what is the foundation of that person? Because, you know, as we all know, Bill, you, when you build a strong foundation, you can put anything on top of it. Sure. You know, if you don't have a strong foundation, I don't care what you put on top of it, and those are called facades. These are people that do not earn what they have in life, and but they don't have a solid foundation. You came up with a solid foundation, so you meet, you know, a girl, and, and you get married. Okay? Yes. And now I understand you have three children. Yes, I and, do. And you have three and a half grandchildren. <laughs> yes. Which means there's another one coming. So tell me about your, your family, your kids. And, my, uh, my, all my children, <coughs> uh, um, they, they went to, to, to school. Um, interesting thing that we did with our, with our children is, um, we let them, we, we did not demand, we gave them the option to do one year of high school in Mexico after they graduated. So my okay, children so are bilingual. after they graduated from high school? Up, uh, in, the, in the United States. So you want them to go back to Mexico to do another year? Before they went to, to college, we gave them the option, and my children, uh, I'm very glad to say, they all took that opportunity. So they all did one year of extra high school in Mexico. Why, would they, why, did, you, why did you want them to do that? I wanted them to, um, to, to, to be um, um, bilingual. And I, to give the opportunity to be bilingual, I also wanted to, to see where I came from as well. I thought there was an opportunity to see the culture, and my children embraced us since day one because we often went back there when they were, they were, they were young. So it was, it was a wonderful uh, game plan, I guess, because my children all speak the language and they all understand tremendously, not just the, um, uh, the everyday um, uh, tourist life, they understand the culture of Mexico, specifically of the Yucatan Peninsula. And a little later on, we're gonna talk about what he did with the documentary, and it will be airing it, but I'll, I'll get to this in a, in a second. So Bill, you came in, you worked. Um, you know, uh, how were your, um, your values at that time at 14? I mean, your, your, your family values. They, they are uh, what they are today, to be honest with you. They, I, I just passed them on. I was, I was taught to be very respectful to your family at all times, and family came first. Uh, in the end, that's all we have, we have left. And we, all my brothers, and, and I have a sister, and all of us as a family all helped each other greatly. Um, and we, whatever we can do for each other, we always have, um, and for our children as well. And we were blessed to be in this country, which has so much to offer, uh, that we, we all try to give back as much as we can as well, um, through, through any way we can, whether it's volunteering, whether it's, um, pledging sometimes, but, um, but if anything else, we want to be, learn to be good Americans. I was, I've often said, I mean, I'm a Mexican by birth, but I'm an American by choice. So, I mean, and, and, and I guess in a sense, we're all immigrants to a degree, because we all, you know, our ancestors came over, but the, the interesting thing about your story, and, and we're gonna continue on with it, is that how you developed and went into business and how it, what it became, and then um, you know what you learned from the, the values that you had and how important it is to have those family values because I think they're passed on throughout your businesses that you have and you know what you know um, how to take care of people because you came up the ranks. Folks, I'm talking to Bill Rosato. Um, Bill uh, as, um, is a, an entrepreneur, I would say, but started with zero, zip. Uh, and decided that anything he has, nothing comes free, folks. Notice that. Nothing comes free, because when you get it for free, that's what it's worth, nothing. Um, and build up a character and a successful business, but also then did a documentary, which we're going to be airing here, and you'll be able to get it on our web, on our app as well. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Samuel San Show. Folks, remember 24-7, ssptv.com. All of the shows are on our website and um, a lot more about other shows. Remember our app. 
uh, search our app, SSP TV, uh, on any um, smartphone you have or whatever, and uh, you can watch all of the shows, particularly this show, The Sam Lasan Show. My guest, Bill Rosado, uh, came over here from Mexico when he was 14, accomplishes a lot. We're going to talk a little bit, but here's, here's Bill Rosado's statement, okay? Uh, as, and listen to this. I find it very, very fascinating. As I live the American reality, not so much a dream, it has allowed me to be able to share my previous life with my family, friends, and American people. Often, immigrants are not able to share their traditions, so I am blessed to do so and to celebrate the people of the city where I came from and show how my culture and traditions have developed. And that probably has to do with the documentary that we'll talk about. Is that correct? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, but now let's talk about you worked in a nursing home, you came over, you had values, you had family values. Then you went into the automotive. How did you get involved with the automotive industry and establish the number of car dealers that you have? Well, my, I, I was introduced to the car business by my father-in-law that suggested, hey, you don't have a, you don't have a career in mind. He was, he was a salesman at one time. So I, I met a fellow who, uh, who um, was a manager at a car dealership in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And within the first hour, I embraced the, uh, the business. I loved it. And I grew from there. I sold uh, I was, I was, a, I was a very good salesman. Um, then I moved into management. And an opportunity came for me to buy a small dealership in Lehigh, Pennsylvania. So I gave up. Um, I was outside of Philadelphia. So I got, right, got rid of that job. And I started all over again by you know, just be owning a very small dealership. And from there on, I acquired the other dealerships. So we, I own up to 11 stores at one time. And uh, during the recession- 11 dealers, 11 stores? 11 car dealerships, yes, dealership. yes. Uh, wow, and they were out, uh, were they throughout Pennsylvania? And what, there was one in New York State, Middletown, New York. I own okay, a yes. Buick Panic GMC store in New York. Uh, but I was basically in, 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 all over in Pennsylvania. Wow, that's a challenge. It, w it was a challenge, and during the recession, it was a bigger challenge. So. Yeah, well, that's, and, and I'm surprised you survived because it that was, was, it was a major hit for the, uh, for the auto industry. It was, it, it, was, it was terrible. It was awful. But, you know, we survived it, and we learned a lot from it, and uh, this is the kind of stuff you re read about in the history books, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, you know that, that, that's just the, the, what the, it was a time which I think the United States as a country had to revisit a lot of a lot of plans, including business plans, mm -hmm. and I revisited mine, and I was blessed to survive it. And of course, uh, these things don't happen overnight, okay? Um, the mission statement that you bring, or you have, okay, has to be translated to all the areas of business that you're involved with, and the people that you meet, okay? So, um, as I said to you before, I'm always concerned about what is your foundation in life. Do you have a faith? Do you have, you know, doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a Catholic president. But however, if you have some kind of faith, what I think everybody needs, I think it, that's my opinion, a substance. But that, you're, you know, as the head f trickles down to everyone that you employ, okay? Do you find that to be the case, Bill? Very much so. <clears throat> I'm definitely a small businessman. I am... I believe in accessibility. Every employee has access, access to me from management all the way to, bottom, to lower management to, to a, a, just a, a cleaning de the department I have. They have access to me. Everybody calls me, Bill, I walk to the door and they need to talk to me about something. I'm the one So who, what stores you have? What? I have um, uh, Lehigh and Kia. Lehigh and Kia. Performance Kia in Music, Pennsylvania. Dixon City Hyundai in uh, Dixon City, Pennsylvania. Uh, Milford Chrysler Dodge Jeep in Milford, Pennsylvania. And I have a Chevrolet st uh, dealership in Broadheadsville, Pennsylvania. Wow. And uh, certainly they're all, all your managers are trained as to what Bill Rosado's ways and, and how he treats people, you know. Well, most of my management has been with me from, I think, my lower man. Uh, up to 31 years they've been with me, right? so my managers. When you have a business that many years, no matter what business, I mean, there's a lot of you know friends of mine you know who've been around a long time. You have to be doing something right because you have repeat customers that come in uh, who you know purchased automobiles or auto uh, trucks or whatever from you. Mm -hmm. um, so there has to be something right there. Be, 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 be Absolutely, it. and and understand that they, often you may lose a customer. And so you have to spend the time to, why did we lose that customer? And, and let it play out. And you, you'll get them back if you do the right thing. 
Well, that's so true. You know, I told you before, you know, when you have worked all your life, you know, people don't know the seven days a week, the 12, 14 hours a day, the challenges, um, you know, the finances and everything. And, and, and you, you try to show some, you know, as you grow in life, uh, and they come up and say, "Well, you're a lucky guy. He's a lucky guy." And and and, when, and, and I understand that, but sometimes I say, well, "You know, it's an interesting thing. Uh, the uh, the harder I work, the luckier I become." You know, <laughs> and, and you had mentioned that before. Now, the other thing is, when you came back, you said you uh, your children went to school and they graduated. You send them back to Mexico for one year. Yes. And that was basically to reintroduce them to where well, they... No, all my children were born here. <laughs> yes, I know. That. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to, um, um, to see a part of my, of, of my culture, which um, because I still have a lot of family in Mexico, um, it, I think the timing was perfect. And I wanted them to introduce them to, to learn the language. And they, 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 they all learn it. You know, every culture brings something to the table. Okay, I have a friend of mine, Father Steve, uh, who... Um, just loves traveling, many different, you know, I mean, different countries, okay, Himalayas, you know, um, Hong Kong, Japan, you name it, you know, he's, and, and he brings, he learns a lot about their culture and people, okay, and I think that's so very important, all right, um, so what you did was, you went out and um, got together with um, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Vos. Ken okay. Vos, yes. Okay, now, and you did a documentary, Okay, and folks, this is it. We're going to be playing this on SSB TV. Uh, it's called, when you talk about culture and different things, it's called Living Treasures of the Yucatan with Bill Rosado, uh, directed by Ken Vos. Um, and now, so now, um, when you talk about culture, all right, and you talk about what you want to do, tell me about this. When we come back after break, I want you to tell me what made you develop this documentary, which is from what I understand extremely well, and we'll be showing it, uh, why you developed it, and what are some of the things that we'll learn from this? Because no matter where we go, I was in Italy with my wife and, and my family, we went to France, and, and boy, we learned a lot, okay, from the, the different cultures. Folks, I'm talking to Bill Rosato, uh, owns a number of car dealerships, you just heard, but then decided we're gonna give something back, and you know, we always all hear that, you know, give something back, give something back. Well, Bill Rosato did give something back, but this particular uh, documentary, uh, we'll talk about it, and you'll be able to see it in its full entirety here for the next month on uh, SSP TV. We'll be back right after this. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam Lasant. Remember, 24-7 SSPTV.com or download the app, SSP TV. I have friends of mine in Afghanistan uh, and also in uh, the uh, Himalayan mountains uh, who are watching our shows uh, from the app. My guest, Bill Rosado, uh, extremely successful person, worked his way from nothing, came over from Mexico when he was 14 years old, uh, has five car uh, auto dealerships right now, plus um, he, you wanted to dabble into um, the uh, independent film situation. Did you have a, a desire for that? Uh, oh, absolutely. I've always been very supportive of um, of the independent film industry. I sponsor a couple of small film festivals, and I'm fascinated by the uh, the message that you get out of an independent film. Now, what you did was you developed this documentary. Okay, now the documentary, and folks, again, it'll be seen here. You can watch it. Just check our, our schedules on your TV channel. Living Treasures of the Yucatan with Bill Rosado. Now, how did this come about? Well, it started like this. My dear friend Ken Vos, who is the, um, the writing um, a professor at Wilkes University, I called him and said, listen, I want to leave something for my grandchildren. As I go back to Mexico on a regular basis, I see a lot of the old, the old traditions dying. Uh, it seems minimal, but to me, it's part of my childhood. And how do I leave this so my grandchildren get to see it? Because it won't be there but when, they, when they get old enough. Street vendors, I said. I want to I rec record some of the street vendors in the city. Um, and then from there on, there's other traditions I would like to do. So he came back to me two days later and he said, we're not going to do this just for you. He said, I want to, I want to talk to you about doing a series and, and market it. And he said, let's do a pilot. So I, I listened to him and because I think he saw the value in this. And so we went down to Merida and we did our first uh, pilot. And this one is, is, is the, um, uh, a gentleman who goes down the street every day and sharpens knives. 
Again, there was many of them years ago, but today we even had a hard time finding him. So in other words, when you say the treasurers of Yucatan, you're referring to these different people that you see and who have been there with their trades? That, and overall, the traditions, like I said, the, uh, the, the, to me, uh, uh, the, 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 the treasure of the culture is all of the traditions that people still practice. Yeah. Whether it is the street vendors, there are some religious uh, um, uh, traditions that they still uh, practice, and we do have uh, a few of the episodes are going to be showing that as well. That's what I mean by, by treasures, those, those, those small things that when they disappear, we miss them. You said uh, that Mexico is, is predominantly Catholic, right? Yes. Okay, and um, now, do they practice their faith? Yes, they do. We are they, the Catholic Church in in Mexico is uh, is embraced by the people themselves, and it is a, it, 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 it's very hard to find any other country. I'm sure there exists. And you know what? I'm just going to say that. And and I applaud. Now, if it was Protestant or Jewish, it doesn't make any difference as long as they embraced it and, and they believe it. And I was disappointed in Rome, in Italy, because even though I'm Italian, okay, I was saddened to find that. A lot of Italians do not practice the Catholic religion, and they're right there in Rome. I was shocked to find that, even though I appreciated the traditions that we had. But the fact that they did not practice the faith, that everything they got from life was because of their faith and in God. And again, I'm not pushing Catholicism. I'm saying the, that's what I applaud the Mexican people for. They, they practice what they preach. They absolutely do. You'll see in the... Um, the documentary, I, part of it was filmed in a church in the middle of the day. Wow. And if you go down there right now, there are people praying. You know, that's part of, that's part of our life down there. And you brought that with you, brought the culture. So when you say the treasures, and, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Bob Malchik said he, it was one of the best he's ever seen. And, and we do documentaries as well. Uh, however, but uh, it's, why are those traditions important for people? I, I think the, um, um, the, the is the, the, the culture of the, of the Mexican people, they are very comfortable to a great degree with their lives. So embracing the traditions to them is almost automatic because they don't want it to go away. But unfortunately, as, as cities develop, um, as they have access to see other things, some of those have started, they, they start diminishing. Yeah. Where, where, this particular city that you, how close is this to any, like Mexico City or, or any? We I, are a, we are a good distance from Mexico City by car, but we're about twelve hours. Merida is the capital of the state of Yucatan. Now the Yucatan Peninsula is formed of three different states: Quintana Roo, where Cancun is, we yeah. all identify with that. Yeah. Then there's Yucatan, and then there's Campeche. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but it's a, that big piece of land that sticks out that. Kind of touches Cuba, but it almost touches Florida. That's so you're, where I'm from. So you're way, you're fr way I'm southeast Mexico. That's okay. Correct. And Acapulco, you're. It's you're, on the other side, it's on the Pacific side. Okay. We're in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. All right. So that's that's fascinating itself. So, um, Bill, you know, it's um, uh, I really enjoy talking with you because I, I think you know I, I think about my traditions. One of the things that I really feel bad about is my my grandparents used to speak to me in Italian. I see. But I would speak to them back in English. I could kick myself in a fanny for doing that. Because the Italian language, I think, is close to the Spanish language. Too. Very, very close. Yes. And, you know, my wife speaks Spanish um, um, and Italian, no matter what she adapts to it immediately. But I, I, so, I feel so, I just get kicked myself. Even the Polish kids I talked about, well, they used to talk to them Polish and I would talk in English. Now, you know, some of their, when they would visit certain people, you know, they, they can't speak the language. What lesson do you think you want people to learn from this documentary, Bill? Well, today in the environment, I think that we see the, um, Mexico is in the front uh, of the political part of the, of the world. Uh, I, I just wanted to bring uh, another dimension to look at as to, uh, as to the, the people yeah. uh, of Mexico. Let's remove politics from that for, sure. for, for, yeah. for those few minutes yeah. and appreciate what they have to offer. Bill, you know what I appreciate? Anybody. My grandfather and grandmothers, they worked for everything they want. They never, never looked for a handout. They never wanted anything for free. They worked for it. They were very appreciative what they got, but that's exactly what you did. And that's exactly what your family did. 
Thank you very much. You know, and, and you are to be uh, applauded for that, really. You are a, a great testimonial to a lot of immigrants that did it the right way, okay? And that's all we're saying. My parents did it, you did it, yes. and that's a tribute. And your grandchildren and the ones coming are going to love what you've done for them. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Sam. Bill Rosado, folks, uh, the documentary, we'll be showing it here. It'll be on our app, uh, and it is called Living Treasures of the Yucatan with Bill Rosado. I can't wait to see it. We'll see you next time.